Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about the 100 years of women's suffrage. And it's so unbelievable to think that in 2017 uh, we will be celebrating this 100th anniversary of women's rights to vote. And so I, I'm here with two great guests. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Jerry Benjamin who is director of the Benjamin Center for Public Policy Initiatives at SUNY at New Pulse. We welcome you, Jerry. Delighted to be here, Sam. And it's so nice. This is a new new title uh, for your public policy uh, area, and it has your name in it, and that's great. Great that's tribute very, to very, you. Very, very uh, gratifying. Right. <laughs> We've been at this for a little while on, yeah. on all these policy issues. So 47 years. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Okay, and Dr. Eve uh, Walter Moore, and um, Eve, you're the director of research and evaluation at the Benjamin Center, so I welcome you. Thank you. Thank and you me. both come down from New Paul, so uh, you know on on such a special special topic. So, Jerry, tell us what happened maybe almost a hundred years ago. Well, uh, women were finally uh, given the right to vote in New York. It was ahead of the uh, federal decision to give women the rights to vote. It was the first, New York was the first state in uh, east of the Mississippi for which this occurred. Some states that entered the union with women having the right to vote in the newer states. And uh, it, it, it culminated, it, it's both a culmination and a beginning. It culminated an effort that had been going on for, you might say, uh, centuries, uh, uh, more, but more immediately, decades to give so, women the franchise, and it, it was the beginning of, of uh, women becoming, uh, uh, approaching equality. I, I, I'm a little concerned that I haven't reached equality, but approaching mm -hmm. equality in the political system of, of the so state. It's so interesting to think about women voting because now everybody kind of says, well, who the women are going to support, and there are more women sometimes voting than men. But so a long time ago when our country was fashioned, it was all about the men the property owners, probably. property owning property in, in the in the eighteenth century, property property owning males, married women did not have property rights, single women under certain circumstances had property rights. Uh, interestingly, uh, women under Dutch rule, if you go back to the seventeenth century, were better situated legally than women under British rule. So British mm -hmm. uh, dominance in New York and other colonies uh, diminished the, the status of women in uh, political status of women mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the legal status of women for a long time. So what was happening, um, uh, you know, there were, so New York State in, in um, 1917 uh, passed legislation with the, with the public supporting it. Right, by but, referendum, right. But prior to that, had there been a lot of activity on a national level? Well, national, a lot of activity on a national level, a lot of activity in New York. I, I'm very interested in the state constitution, as you know, and there were efforts at constitutional conventions to give women the vote uh, in 1894 and 1915. There was a failed referendum in 1915, and uh, uh, going back to the Seneca, uh, the convention in Seneca Falls, uh, uh, the initial mobilization of women politically is, is New York based, Western New York based. If you look at the uh, What's really interesting to me, uh, a lot of things are interesting to me. One interesting thing is that <laughs> how, how much uh, rural women in, in, in the rural parts of New York were leaders in this, in this effort. It is interesting because I, I, would, I would probably think about it back then of maybe the leaders in New York City, which there right. were. Right, there were, and, and uh, people are presumed to think that social change is, uh, is urban-based, but in uh -huh, fact, uh -huh. uh, that's not always the case. And, uh, uh, one, one, one interesting thing about the politics of this, uh, we're going to look at the past, present, and future at our conference in, in April of 2017. We've been working on this for about four, now going on two years to organize this. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, dimensions to it. But one is that the coalition that achieved this was a broad-based coalition, not only of privileged people, usually uh, early women who got elected were... Uh, Republicans and lots of them were privileged to have educations, and they and they came from advantaged families. But the, the coalition that actually achieved the women's vote was a very broad-based coalition socially, and uh, the the reform movements of the time, as they are now, were interlinked on a variety of issues. And mm -hmm. So uh, the politics, uh, the polit we sometimes tend to oversimplify in retrospect the politics, 
the difficulties were enormous. So, uh, the, so why, <laughs> why wouldn't the men want the women to vote? Or who, who voted, do you have any idea who voted against it the first time around in 1915? Who, well, we, who you know, said we, no? Actually, we were talking about this a little before we came on the air. Uh, something I didn't know before I started to read a little bit about this uh, f to prepare for this conversation, but uh, this was a time of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, pro of prohibition. The national uh, effort to uh, ban the recreational use of alcohol and uh, people who were in the alcohol industry and fearful of the ban were concerned that women were more hostile to uh, alcohol consumption than men. So if they came into the than men were, so if they came into the electorate, they would produce a majority for prohibition. So mm -hmm. there were interlinked uh, issues. Uh, it, uh, women voting was very threatening to conventional uh, ideas about social mores, roles in the family, and so on, and. Uh, if you read the uh, the debates in the in in the various uh, historic venues where you can find them, uh, you're you're kind of uh, at least I am a little bit reminded of how uh, straightforward the predisposition was. Some people believe that women weren't as smart as men, you know, and this even existed well into the 1920s when Al Smith had. Uh, a principal advisor who was a woman who had sat in, the, sat in the room, much to the dismay of men who would come in to confer, confer with the governor. So mm -hmm. there were prejudices, uh, and, and there were social roles, and there were interests, and they were all uh, a complicated mixture of, uh, of those dimensions mm -hmm. that, that, that played a part in the politics. So Eve, with all that, you're, you're kind of doing more into probably some other policy, but but have you picked up on all of the issues that, that Jerry is dealing with? with uh, the history of all of this? It's been a learning experience. It's, it's great. The, the team of people who we have working on this conference um, come from diverse backgrounds. So we have mm -hmm. a historian, we have a political scientist, a social worker, um, myself, I'm in public health. And so um, it's been very educational because not only does every perspective come into play when looking at what seems like just a singular issue, um, it also gives us a chance to talk to people like you and really mm -hmm. hear how these decisions have influenced where you are now mm -hmm, and where mm -hmm. everybody else is. Right. Well, we're, Eve's particularly interested in understanding the uh, condition of women and their circumstance now. We're, and she, we're going to, in connection with our conference, which I mentioned earlier, she's going to be doing a, uh, a poll that I think be unique on the current condition of women, attitudes toward women, uh, attitudes of women, and so on. Maybe mm -hmm. she could say a little more about that. Mm -hmm. well, well, let's talk about, so, the conference that uh, you're, you're planning uh, in, in 2017. I think it's in April of April 20th and 21st, 2017. Right. And um, at that conference, how are you going to partition it out? Are you, you going to focus a lot on the history? Well, we have... Uh, First of all, we have a number of partners, the State League of Women Voters, the, the, uh, the, Rose, the uh, FDR uh, historic site and archives, uh, the SUNY system is helpful, Rockefeller Institute of the SUNY system uh, are uh, a, couple of, a couple of our partners. So it's going to be a, cl a collaborative effort. Some of it's going to be in Dutchess County at the, at the FDR site, and some is going to be at SUNY New Paltz. Mm -hmm. We have uh, three focal points. It's simply divided into past, present, and future. So the history mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. women's movement, the present, con present political role and circumstance of women, and uh, what comes next. Mm -hmm. And we're going to engage public people who have had a historic role in New York, uh, people who've held public office, scholars who study these questions, uh, interested mm -hmm. students, of course. We're going to include students and interested uh, people from the media. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have uh, some, uh, we think, high-profile uh, keynote speakers. So I, I know just talking about the past, I've actually gotten some emails recently because there's been some publicity on, on the 100 years coming up. Uh, but I've gotten emails from, from some of my constituents um, who've had relatives that uh, were involved in legislation or involved back then trying to get people to vote, um, you know, to allow women to vote. So how, do you, how are you going to... Is there a lot of reaching out to some of these families, um, or well, is that's it just one of the that's one of the reasons we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, we're hoping that people will uh, will contact us. Um, we've already begun to 
we're very well advanced in talking to scholars who write about this, but we haven't done, and we, we've created partnerships, and we hope to have a statewide dimension of our conference through the SUNY system and the Rockefeller Institute, but we haven't yet tried to reach people who have a personal and, and historic personal connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we'd be very interested in those people writing, uh, connecting us through our website and uh, letting us know their interest, and we will certainly be in touch with them. Right, and That's attending great. the conference mm -hmm. and being a part of it. I say that, you know, I think what's really intriguing um, is that, well, first I'm going to add that it's the Eleanor Roosevelt Library, just right. so we get that clear, um, that the, the historical piece of it, um, the scholars who are coming to speak are really addressing the issue of why New York, why now, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's not agreed upon. So the different scholars will debate what they think um, is the reason why it happened, why in New York, why at that time. So I think that's interesting and it'd be really mm -hmm. great if people who have a connection with that, with their family right. were a part, but this is a panel, so there'll be mm -hmm. opportunities to, for people to ask questions and, and, and interject their experiences as well. Who are some of the women? What are some of the names of the people that... Well, the famous one, Elizabeth, famous. Katie, Elizabeth yes. Katie, Katie Stanton is a famous... A famous uh, All right, and what, what should she do? Well, I think she was some, one of the uh, leaders in uh, mobilizing the women's uh, uh, movement towards gathering uh, mm -hmm. the vote. Our, our expert on this is Susan Lewis, who's a great uh, scholar of, of women's history. And, uh, uh, one of her, uh, I, I can't recall all the names, but she, one of her interests is in debunking uh, the presumption that some people, that some of the people who are thought to be important were important, and others who weren't thought to be important are actually very important. So, right. So right. we'll be we'll be uh, attending to that. Right. And actually, Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, although there there are a lot of women that were in political uh, office, um, she wasn't. She she was. Partly there, uh, but she was very significant right. uh, um, during that time, and she was a very much a mobilizing force. Mm -hmm. You know, she was mm -hmm. an encouraging and mobilizing force. Right. But she was a young woman. Her her political consequence in New York State. I used to read her a column in the New York Post when I was a boy, mm -hmm. uh, in the fifties, and her political force and moral authority um, was greatest in the fifties and sixties. So she was less prominent important but less prominent person. We tend to think of somebody who comes to be very important as having been always important. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to diminish her importance, but she was uh, a less prominent person earlier in her life when she was very young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, I think w one thing that's important, and uh, you know, this is something that Susan would have said if she was here, is that while this event is recognizing a historical um, a significant historical event, and that's really great and important. It really is about setting the foundation for understanding where we are now and understanding mm -hmm. where we need to go. And I think that that's that's a, a key element to this. The history sets the gives the context, but right. it really the conversation then needs to and will go to understanding our condition, and then and and really how does this woman's movement need to change and evolve and adapt as we go forward so that it does become more inclusive and, mm -hmm. and you know, keeps evolving with society. There's a film that's, that I've seen the pre previews to it on uh, the suffra suffrage movement in England. And uh, I was talking to Susan before we came here and she said, well, that film uh, emphasizes the kind of uh, I'm not going to call it violent, but you know, breaking windows, confrontational right, right. politics, mm -hmm. and and uh, Susan thought it was important to say that the mobilizing effort here was less violent, but very effective, very, a mass mobilizing mm -hmm, effort, right. and very effective, and a more diverse group and, of people, and a more, di and a more diverse uh, constituency Including for change. Men. Right. So where are we today? We're not looking at the future yet, but where are we today with the women of New York State or the women? In well, our country? we have. Uh, Lots of charts and tables. One of my colleagues, <laughs> one, one of my colleagues, uh, K.T. Tobin, is writing a doctoral dissertation on women in leadership in the Hudson Valley. Just about finished at SUNY Albany, and, and has lots of background on that. So, in your in the body you're in, there are 25 percent, mm -hmm, roughly 25 mm -hmm. percent women. I think New York is a little below the average for the state, near the mean. Mm -hmm. uh, women in local in school boards, about 42 percent of elected officials in school boards in New York State. But generally, the, the metric is. Uh, in uh, 
in uh, judgeships, federal judgeships, 25 percent, a little higher maybe in mm -hmm. state judgeships. So uh, if you think that women are 50 percent of not the population, not they're, not, they're not 50 percent in elective right. office. Well, it, uh, had, it has gone mm -hmm. up, but then but, it's but it, been it, plateaued. I think, the, I think we've reached, at least if you look at the charts that, that I've got in my pocket, which I won't try to show on the <laughs> they're not going to show very well, they're, they're printed, the curves move upward and then f sort of flatten. So, so when uh, did they flatten? In the late 90s? Or no, they flattened in the more recently, in the last decade or so. Uh, okay. it, uh, it's, not, it's not been a continuous, well, I said to Eve on the way over here, of course, 50 percent of the U.S. senators from New York are women, but mm -hmm. there's only two mm -hmm. U.S. senators. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that could happen in a lot of states, I right, suppose. Some states, 100 percent of the U.S. senators are women. <laughs> but, but, but the, so the, the n is too small, right? right. When, when you when you look when you look at the uh, at the stats, you say, well, you know, there's been lots of progress, but there seems to be sort of a pause. And uh, so the interesting question is, uh, is that important? Mm -hmm. You know, is it important that uh, that 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 curves keep rising for the society? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if so, why ha why is it it's sort of flattened? Mm -hmm. uh, what ought to be done about it? Those are some questions that. So are worth, worth those will be questions that would be a part of a conference, or is that going to be some kind of research that? Well, be, be done we, what, what that? we've done, we've got about uh, what well, we have about twelve people who are going to be presenting, twelve or fourteen people, and we're going to have a book mm -hmm. coming out of it. So we have really uh, uh, going to explore these questions. We're not going to produce the research, except with the exception of Eve's survey, which we're going to produce and highlight mm -hmm. on the condition of women uh, in New York. Uh, we're not going to produce scholarship. We're going to gather scholarship uh, from the leading researchers on the subject, and we're going to publish it. But re more more interesting, I think, for the general audience is this is Eve's idea. We're going to produce some presentation materials, and we're going to and say for a 20-minute presentation on the subject. So for the year uh, 2017, people who want to talk about this will have free of charge, or present, like we would give it to you or your colleagues in the assembly, free of charge, a presentation that they can show at a public meeting and say, okay, we'd like mm -hmm. to talk this over. This is an anniversary. It's important to be thoughtful about this subject right. and uh, precipitate questions and discussions. Well, I definitely like to do that, to take mm -hmm. that to my assembly district and mm -hmm. have a discussion um, about where we've been where and where we should go so, and what I mean, needs to be done. To address what you were saying, our, our part of our, our present condition panel, will we're hoping to be lit female lieutenant governors who can mm -hmm. speak about their experiences in politics as a woman. Um, the, the survey that we're talking about is actually not a condition of women's survey because there are those things. We, we know, you know, the, the salary differentials, we know what percentage mm -hmm. of women are here or there. Um, this is actually more related to the perception of women and, and it goes back to your question of well where are we now in terms of um, women and mm -hmm. we, we don't really know in the United States where we are. We don't know how what people think of women. We don't know what they really think about women in government. We don't know what they think about women in the home. We, we, there's a lot of things that we uh, we can assume are the perceptions mm -hmm. of people, but we don't actually really have a metric that determines it. And sometimes what we assume is wrong. We know right. that for sure. Well, we went through that whole period of the Equal Rights Amendment. Right. So probably there was a lot, and that was in the 70s, I right. guess. Right. Um, and there was a lot of discussion how we perceive the role of the woman that was going on, but, but things have really changed a lot since then. And mm -hmm. they also, those all come out of, you know, Politicians are academics who come from their mm -hmm. own place. They're either they may be white males or maybe white females. Um, you know, the the story of women's experience then needs to have the voice of white women, black women, Hispanic women, poor women, wealthy women. You know, there's there's many mm -hmm. voices that define the experience of women, and the idea is to really get them all. Well, we we have, as you know, been been. Uh, debating on a women's agenda in the legislature for several years yes, now. Right. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so there is a concept, there is such a thing as a women's agenda, and that this is what it ought to be. And uh, it's interesting uh, uh, about the uh, connection between that agenda and uh, the perceptions that Eve are talking about. Is there a disjunction between those? That's an interesting mm -hmm. question. It may or may not be a disjunction. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing, and 
uh, at every public place I appear, I talk about this, we're going to have a vote in 2017 on whether to have a constitutional convention. There's a late, great concern about uh, uh, choice and uh, what the Supreme Court is going to do on the question of, of choice as it mm -hmm. if, if, in fact, it becomes more conservative, which is quite possible depending on the outcome of the presidential election and what the vacancies are that arise and so on. So uh, at a state convention, you could put in provisions to protect uh, choice by women, for example, or you can put in provisions that would limit it. No, but, but the debate about what rights ought to be is both a state level and a national level debate. And this, right. this needs to be linked to an understanding, a basic re understanding from research and serious study about what uh, perceptions are and what self-perception mm -hmm. is and what needs mm -hmm. are and so on. Well, the Constitution, you're so right about that because actually in 2001 we voted on a constitutional amendment that I'd actually introduced to have our Constitution of the State of New York gender neutral. Right, that was very important. And, uh, yeah, but I have to tell you, it was, it was really hard, Jerry, to encourage some people to vote for that. I mean, it, it did win um, and we did change it. And so we are, you know, it's he, she, or they, or right. um, so we've made it gender neutral. But uh, there were a lot of, there was always a force out there saying, why bother right. with the name? Right. So I'm assuming with other constitutional questions, they're always hard. They're always hard right. to make change. Well, the, lang the language defines perception. Language is very mm -hmm. important as, as uh I, I guess mm -hmm. it's, a tr it's almost a truism, but uh, right, we were talking about that in the car coming over here. And, and uh, I have to say that you're, uh, I didn't come here to say this, but you're among those legislators I regard as constitutional entrepreneurs. I mean, you're paying attention to what's in the state constitution mm -hmm. and figuring out the degree to which it's important and changing the state constitution in serious ways as opposed mm -hmm. to marginal and, and less consequential mm -hmm. ways, ways is not an easy thing. Right, not easy. So there are, you know, going back to your question about there, there is a woman's agenda, or right. we're, we're, we've been trying very hard. We passed most of the legislation this year that was policies that we felt were good for women. Um, and, the, and the question is, you know, what's the role of the woman in helping to make all those judgment calls, and where do we go in the future with the policy issues? We, we, we've been talking before we started the show, just about with Eve about domestic violence, um, which is more of a woman's issue than a man's issue, and and well, you know it was yeah, kind it's of we were actually talking in the car because uh, as a violence researcher, I kind of had a, this time where I had to decide whether I was going to do assaults or domestic violence, and it, uh -huh. it was a challenging decision because domestic violence is typically research done by women. There's mm -hmm. it's it's and then it becomes uh, devalued in potentially in, among violence researchers because it's done by women and it's about women. Um, but uh, you know, it's a significant prevailing problem in this country and it's one that we haven't seen a decline despite greater awareness and um, you know, this, this ties in with, this. it's a good example of, of understanding um, perceptions and perceptions of the role of women. It's also a good example of understanding the importance of knowing that different voices need to communicate about this. So for example, the domestic violence movement was originally done by mostly middle upper class white women. And so a lot of the um, ideas we have about domestic violence comes from that lens. And uh, I was giving the example in the car, this idea of that women don't leave domestic violent relationships and people try to understand why they don't leave. But if you look among black women, they do. And so the, we hold a lot of myths because of who mm -hmm. the people are that are looking at these things. So it's not only that it gets stuck with women, but sometimes it gets stuck with white women and we don't really mm -hmm. get to see the full sense of the condition and what we need to do to move it forward. But you know, I don't, I don't think that the key to having women in leadership roles in, in representative bodies is their particular interest in one or another kind of issue. I think the key is that the legitimacy of the society depends upon people in the society perceiving the representative institutions as representative. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are lots of ways to define representation. I, I gave a whole seminar on that and learned a lot uh, to teach the seminar. But one way is the demographic representation mm -hmm. of the of the body. Uh, right. Does the body reflect the society's diversity? Mm -hmm. and I actually think if you looked at the New York State Assembly, would you say it's 
it's more quite it's more demographically represented, far more than it used to be, mm -hmm. and and not distant. I I, I actually did stats a, a couple of, a period of time ago. It's things that seem mm -hmm. a couple of years ago to me are actually six or eight years ago, <laughs> but uh, with regard to race, it was uh, uh, gender not, uh, but there was been been a change uh, closer. Mm -hmm. to being representative demographically. Race, yes, re relatively representative. Uh, ethnicity, not, not so. For example, the uh, Asian, American, Asian American population is rising very fast in New York, but mm -hmm. the Asian American representation in the... We use in the, maybe one or two. Right, and right. Then, so, so, certainly not right. so, so but, the, but, the, but there's always, <laughs> right. But there's always a lag. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we did very, you know, we could talk endlessly. We did very interesting... Uh, study of African-American representation on school boards and, and lo in local governments relative to the population of those communities. And, uh, you know, there are federal laws about that, the Voting Rights mm -hmm. Act, but in fact, uh, the fact of the law being there didn't require its use. The, the communities were, with a lag, uh, electing uh, representatives that were more demographically uh, similar to the populations of the communities. So, there has been change in New York. Uh, uh, people hold on for a while, but replacement occurs, mm -hmm. and, and, and the changes in the community are reflected in the replacement. There might be um, some, some merit, too, in having that discussion with public financing of campaigns or how campaigns function so that more people have an opportunity to run, and that mm -hmm. might well, in the old, more in the old the in the old days, be, when I, uh, my colleagues are more current on this subject than I am, who are researching it now, but you got a lot of situations where women would be nominated where there's little chance to win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you'd get this formal notion that women are running, right. but but they but were running in in, uh, in situations where there was an entrenched incumbent or where their partisan situation was so was uh, relatively uh, extremely disadvantaged. So mm -hmm. the the real test is is first, uh, are people actually winning? Are they able to gather the resources to win? Is that a differential? Is there a differential uh, capacity to do that? And then the other thing that even I were talking about on the way over here, we, we rarely get a chance to talk on in, an to in, 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 in an uninterrupted <laughs> way, but uh, what do women get to do? And, and one of my objections to the uh, idea of women's issues is that uh, women get to be channeled into so-called women's issues, mm -hmm. and uh, they may be, have lesser opportunities within uh, rep representative bodies in, in, lo uh, in locations of power and influence in, on other functions, on, right. on fiscal functions and so on. Right. So I, we've come to an end. Um, Eve, you're going to be really busy with this conference. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> and we're looking forward to it in uh, April of 2017. But right. it's just great to hear what you're doing and the importance of women and the right to vote, um, having been about 100 years ago. Right. And so we'd, we'd welcome uh, watchers uh, uh, to call us or email us. And if they want to be involved, we're happy to engage them with right. this project. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Eve, very much. Thank, Thank you. you all for watching. If you have any questions, you can uh, email them or question them. But if not, just give me a, a call at my number, 914-941-1111. Uh, Thank you so much for watching.